We are going to begin the funeral service for Mrs. Lily Putziger. If you have a cell phone, the family that are here, I'd ask you kindly to place it in the silent mode at this time or turn it completely off. And I'd also like to welcome friends and extended family via live stream to the services today. The funeral will be conducted by Rabbi Jason Fenster of Congregation of B'nai Jehoshua Beth El Hoim in Deerfield. He's gonna start with the ancient tradition of the cutting of the career or rending of the garments. So at this time. We know that this is strange, if not unnatural, that you can't hear. So do you know what? I can speak louder. Speaking quietly is never a problem that I've had before. All right, is that, is that a little better, Fred? You can hear? Yeah? I'll speak up. Hard to speak pastorally loud, but I think we can, we'll find a way to do that together this morning or this afternoon. We know that this is strange. We know this isn't the way the world is supposed to be, that in the midst of loss, we aren't surrounded by the family, the community that you've built, sustained for so many years. But here in this room is family. And we know that there are many, many watching on Zoom with us. And even though they aren't here in this room, we feel their presence. Grateful for the love, the comfort, that surrounds you all in this moment. People gathered to remember and to celebrate Lily, the life of determination and resilience that she lived, the way that she was the glue, the spoke for a family and a community. And though there aren't words to describe the emotion of having lost her, we're here to do sacred work to speak memory into being. And when we do that, when we speak of memory, memory becomes a blessing. We'll begin with words from the Psalms, biblical poetry that speaks to the depths of the human experience. Not to say that there's, that anyone has felt exactly how you feel in this moment, but just to try to find words for that reality. Most compelling to me about this psalm that we know well, it speaks about the valley of shadows, and surely we dwell there in this moment. The end of the psalm, the end of the poem, speaks about a table that is set in front of us, about a cup that overflows. It tells us that goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. Literally, the Hebrew 
It doesn't mean follow. The Hebrew means to chase. That while we sit in the valley of shadows, we are chased by goodness and mercy, by love, by legacy, by memory and blessing. May her memory chase us out of darkness towards light. Mizmor le David, Adonai roi lo echsar, Binot deshe yar bitseni, Al me menuchot yenahaleni. Nafshi yeshovev, Nafshi yeshovev, Yan cheni b'mag beit zedek, b'mag beit zedek liman shemo. Gam ki elech begeitz al mavet, lo irara ki ata imadi. Shiv techa, u mishan techa. Shiv techa, u mishan techa. Hema yenachamuni. Taroch lefanai shulchan. Taroch lefanai shulchan. Taruch lefanai shulchan Neged zor erai Dishanta bashemen roshi Kosi rivaya Dishanta bashemen roshi Kosi rivaya Ach tov v'chesed, yirdefuni kol yemei chayai. Ach tov v'chesed, yirdefuni kol yemei chayai. V'shavti v'veit Adonai. V'shavti v'veit Adonai. The Orechiamim. We'll read together. And those who are at home, if you know these words, please join with us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The rising of the sun, and in its going down, we remember her. In the blowing of the wind, and in the chill of winter, we remember her. In the opening of buds, and in the rebirth of spring, we remember her. In the rustling of leaves, and in the beauty of autumn, we remember her. In the beginning of the year, and when it ends, we will remember her. When you are weary or in need of strength, you will remember her. When you are lost or sick at heart, you will remember her. When you have joys you yearn to share, you will remember her. So long as we live, she too shall live, for she is a part of us as we remember her. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehishem Adonai Mavarach. God has given, and God has taken away. Blessed be the name of God. Surely, with Lily, with your mom, your grandma, your oma, 
a great gift was given, a gift of perseverance and of love. And there are not words to describe the sadness of, having, of her having been taken away. And nonetheless, we say, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevarach, may God's name be blessed. That our job in this moment of memory, in this moment of loss, is to speak memory into being, to not allow memory just to live in our hearts or in our heads, but that memory might live on our lips. And when it does, when we speak of memory, whether it's the big life-changing stories or the little moments, the stories you've told a thousand times, we tell them again and again and again so that memory might become a blessing. That that which remains is and will be for blessing for you, for your family, the house of Israel, and for the world. And so we'll take some time to share some stories. We'll start with Linda. You want to begin? Yeah. Um, my husband, Michael, can't be with us today because he is um, back in Colorado um, preparing for this preparing for this monumental <laughs> snowstorm that's happening now. But he sent me a note I would like to read to you all. He said, it began with Lily's invitation for me to call her mom. Over the years, I began to know her. She would prepare barley soup for me, fish for Linda, and desserts for Natanya. Mom was consistent Family calls like clockwork on Sunday, birthday and anniversary cards arrived early. Her home was always clean and orderly. Food and plastic bags were never wasted. Mom valued long friendships and new acquaintances. She saw travel, opera, nature, and reading the news. She held in high esteem people with good ethics and morals. Her love for the Jewish people was secondary to her great love and care for family. In countless actions, I saw her deep love for Fred. A window into her heart was expressed by her interest and concern for her beloved children, grandchildren, and extended family. My heart breaks over the loss of my second mom. I'm relieved that she is no longer suffering in this world I hope her family in the other world will ease her transition with their loving embrace. May her memory be a blessing. Love, Mike. Um, what I wanted to say is, I know that um, all of you know that mom was a world-class warrior and that um, she and her sister Vera used to joke that they worried so much that um, they had abundant worry left in them that they could actually be hired to worry for other people. And I think, I think there was some truth in that. Um, but the one, one of the places that mom was never worried was when she was swimming. She loved swimming. Um, whether it was in a swimming pool, um, and you know, she used to swim laps for at least an hour, much more than I could ever do, or you know, whether it was in an ocean, and of course, swimming was always better if one of her grandchildren or more than one grandchildren were with her. And I, I say that because um, one thing Stephen found when he went through the apartment, something we had never seen before, was a 15-page biography that she had written as part of a class that she had taken. I think all of you know that actually when she was in her mid-60s, she went back to college. She fulfilled a long, decades-long dream that she had of going back to college. And she earned her associate degree 
And one of the, in one of the classes she took, she was required to write a biography and again, stashed it away, never shared it with us. And Stephen thankfully found it when he was going through their papers. And she responded to a series of questions in that biography. And the last question she was asked was, what animal would you be if you could be an animal? And to me, it was incredibly revealing that the animal she said she would choose to be was a dolphin. And uh, I think all of you have read that paper. And she said that you know, no matter how well cared for, she would never want to be a domestic animal. She didn't want to be a dog or a cat or a ferret or you know, horse or whatever other um, pet animal that people had. She said, because even though they were well cared for, they still were not completely free. But she said dolphins were free, that she, of course, she and my dad went on many, many cruises in their life. And one of the things she loved on those cruises was watching the dolphins follow the ship and you know, jump up into the air. And she, she admired the fact that they were they always were in pods. They always were in family groupings. They were with each other. And that they had such joy in their movement and were so free in their movement. So I think, I, I now kind of think of my mother as a dolphin. And I think of her just moving freely and joyously through this ocean of light and I just want to bless my mother that, that she continues to be free in this beautiful ocean and surrounded by the souls of all who have, all the people in the family and all the friends who have gone before her. And, and I just want to thank her for, bless her for the good person she was and all that she shared with us and for all that she gave in this world. Baruch Dayan, amen. David? My grandmother meant a lot to me. She meant a lot to those of you in this room, and she meant a lot to many, many people who couldn't be here with us today. She was a special woman. She touched many lives and many hearts. Remembering her will be difficult. It will be difficult just to remember that she is not with us anymore. After always being there for us and being there with us, it will be difficult to see my grandfather without his lovely wife beside him. It will be difficult to celebrate holidays, birthdays, and special occasions, knowing that she will not be here to join in the festivities. It will be so difficult whenever I do something that I know would have made her proud, knowing that I will not be able to call her and share the exciting news with her. As difficult as it will be to remember, the act of remembering will also be comforting, effortless, almost second nature. It will be so easy to remember her kindness, her caring, her loving nature. It will be so easy to look at a trinket, a memento, a photo, and remember the story behind it, the happiness and the good times. It will be all too easy every time I eat something with gravy on top, to remember her cooking, her hosting us for meals, and fond memories of the family together. My grandmother is gone, but she will never be forgotten. She has done too much good, she has touched too many lives for her memory to fade. And we can honor that memory by embodying some of the values she extolled. Work hard, earn your reward, and savor what you've earned. 
You can always better yourself, and learning is lifelong. Whether watching Nova on PBS, going back to school, or traveling to experience art and culture firsthand. Put your family first and love them with all your heart. Care for those around you and care for yourself, body, mind, and spirit. Whenever we would say goodbye, she would always tell me there is nothing more important than health, something she emphasized more and more as she recognized her time with us was coming to an end. So on this somber occasion, we mourn the loss of a wonderful woman. But at the same time, we recognize how blessed we all are to have had my grandmother in our lives. All of us have had our lives touched by this wonderful woman. She used to always ask, how did I get so lucky to have such a wonderful family? Grandma, all I can say in response to that is we were just as lucky to have you. Michael. As, uh, you know, as we all know, our grandmother was tremendously proud of her grandchildren. Uh, she was a constant believer in all of us. Whatever it was that we were doing, she, of course, wanted us to be successful in our endeavors, but more importantly, she wanted us to be happy and healthy doing them. Happy and healthy was a phrase that came up a lot when we talked because it was truly the thing she wanted most for her family. She saw great potential in all of us. Growing up, she would tell me that I, I could be an engineer or an architect or a doctor or the mayor of Chicago, um, although she also admitted that she didn't actually want me to be the mayor of Chicago because in her words, they were all crooks. But she did want to vote for someone she actually liked. On more than one occasion, she offered to be a reference on a job application for me. Uh, I, I never really knew if she was kidding or not, um, but she never pushed anything on us. Uh, she was an excellent listener, and she knew what made us excited and what made us feel joy. She just wanted us to be happy and healthy. Even when the conversation wasn't a happy one, my grandmother always had an incredible sense of perspective and a knack for saying the right thing. If not to cheer me up, at least to help me refocus on my priorities. She always told me there would be another house or another job or another game to try again. When I was up, she made me feel like I could achieve anything. And when I was down, she helped me get back on my feet. As I got older, we bonded over our shared love for traveling and cooking. Grandma was always asking what our next big trip was. You know, uh, a prolific traveler herself, it felt like she had a story for every place we would be going to, most of them glowing recollections from her own experiences. And some were very honest reviews of not so great experiences as well. She was always excited to hear our stories when we got back home. As for cooking, we spent long phone calls discussing recipes and techniques. She sensed my excitement whenever I spoke to her about whatever recipe I had just taken out of the oven, always encouraging me to try new things in the kitchen and telling me stories of meals she used to make for grandpa and my dad. Again, some glowing reviews of dishes she'd made over the years, but also some disasters, which she had some good humor about. She was a wonderful cook and baker, and I don't think I'll ever be able to match her prowess in the kitchen. I really miss having these conversations with her. They were always fun and interesting talks. And I like to think we helped keep each other sane over this past year. 
This is how I will remember my grandmother. She had this wonderful ability to see the best in us, to see all of our potential, and to make us feel like anything was possible by simply saying how proud she was of us. I'm incredibly proud to be her grandson. She didn't live an easy life, but she used her experiences to help ensure a better future, the best future, for her children and grandchildren. She only wanted the best for our family. She wanted us to enjoy life as much as possible. In her own words, as long as you're happy and healthy, that's the most important thing. I wish happiness and good health to all of us, all of you, and again, um, thank you for being here to celebrate the life of this wonderful, kind woman. Thank you for sharing um, those really lovely tributes. Um, well, it's sad I didn't know your grandmother. I didn't know Lily, but um, a chance to hear from all of you and learn some of her story is inspiring and heartening to see what she meant and what she was able to build. Soon, it will be Shabbat. And this Shabbat is a special Shabbat. It's called Shabbat HaChodesh, the Shabbat where we announce the beginning of the month of Nisan, which has the holiday of Passover in it. This Shabbat marks a moment in time, the beginning of time, where we escape from a narrow place towards sacred expanse, when we escape from hardship towards freedom and opportunity. It feels fitting to tell Lily's story before this Shabbat. She had more than her fair share of hardship in her life. Born in July 1929 in Vienna, growing up in a small rural village of po Poisdorf, is that right? Pronounced it correctly? Right. In, uh, in Austria. When the Nazis rose to power, her family realized they would not be safe in their home, so they fled to Vienna where they later learned they could buy black market visas to get to the Dominican Republic. A cousin came from Czechoslovakia to help arrange the funds, and they managed to escape Europe in 1939 for the Dominican Republic. Sadly, much of the rest of the family remained in Europe and were killed in concentration camps. But Lily, her parents, her sister, they survived. The lives they built, the family, and the life that she built was marked by resilience, by love, and by sacred expanse. Again, not to make meaning or purpose from the darkest of times in human history, but just to know that this woman, even in the face of fear and cruelty, was able to insist that life and love can persevere. And then a number of years later, in the late 40s, she and her family made her way to the Chicago area. And at this point, this young woman was trilingual, fluent in German, Spanish, and English, could seamlessly switch between each of them, even in shorthand. Her first husband, Gerd Friedrichs, was also a refugee from Berlin, who had survived the war in Shanghai. And tragically, he lost his life while Lily was pregnant with Linda more than her fair share of hardship. Moving in with her parents, and then a few years later, she met Fred, introduced by family friends. And Fred, you said you fell in love with her the moment that you met her, turning to your parents and saying, she is going to be my wife. Celebrating just this past year, 66 years of marriage together. A love of all love. Fred said, always together. That was the image of you two. Your whole lives, even, even as the years wore on, always, always together. As a mother, Lily insisted that family and education sat at the center. As her grandsons just told us, teaching that you could always find a way to learn more and to better yourself 
cheering on the successes of all the members of her family. She prized education. Yeah, when we spoke uh, yesterday, Linda mentioned to me that she wanted to be an astronomer. I love that vision. Kind of like the dolphin, actually. The freedom, the expanse, the mystery and the unknown, the opportunity to grow and to expand and to reach. Escaping from hardship towards possibility. And that's what she did with her time. She would travel cruise after cruise after cruise, coming back with, from one cruise with brochures for the next, always wanting something to look forward to, looking forward towards joy and towards the future. She loved outdoors. She loved nature. She loved the opera, experiencing culture and music. So much so that she would volunteer as an, as an usher just to see one more performance. And throughout her life, Lily was a connector. Stephen said that she kept Hallmark in business with friendships that endured over decades, maintaining a paper calendar every year with every moment of significance so that she would be sure to celebrate you to share the boundless love that she had with all the people that she knew. Because once you were in, you were in. Friendships enduring over decades, even from her time in the Dominican Republic. And most of all, she loved her family, especially the grandchildren and the people that they married. Boundless love. She was the glue, the spoke, holding everything together, reaching out and connecting, making things go. Surely, she lived a difficult life, but she, had, she accomplished an incredible amount. Stephen, you said that there was a fragility to her, but held within that fragility a tremendous strength and determination a life and a legacy characterized by persistence and by resilience. This week we'll read in the Torah that the Israelites were asked to give the gifts of their heart, Nadiv Libo. And when they, were, when they were asked, they gave an overwhelming amount. This was a woman who had boundless gifts of the heart to share with you, to teach you who you might be and who you might become. A legacy and a memory worthy of blessing. May she, may her memory always be a blessing. And together we'll say, Amen. I invite you to rise for the memorial prayer. El male rachamim, shochein bam romim. Hamse menucha nechona, tachat kanfe ashrina. Im kedoshim utorim, kezor harakia mazhirim. Et nishmat lili bat herman veselma. Shehalcha le'olama Ba'al ha'rachamim Yastireha b'seter k'nafav le'olamim V'yitzror b'itzor ha'chaim Et nishmata Adonai hu nachalata V'tanuach b'shalom Al mishkava Vinomar Amen. On the inside page.
God of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of thy presence among the holy and pure, who shine as the brightness of the firmament unto the soul of Lilliputziger, who has gone unto eternity. Lord of mercy, bring her under the cover of thy wings and let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be God's possession, and may her repose be peace. Amen. You can be seated. This does conclude the service uh, here at the chapel. The interment will be private, but will be live streamed as well. So if you would please return to the same link that you're on right now in about 20 minutes or so, and we will resume with the live stream at the graveside. It should be about 20 minutes. Um, if you're going in procession, the family in procession to the cemetery, uh, please keep in mind a few th things while we're in procession. Keep your bright headlights on at all times. Put your emergency blinkers on attach the orange funeral sticker to the passenger portion of your front windshield and we will also attach a flag to the roof of your car and please stay as close as safety permits to the car in front of you also on our website just so you're aware if you'd like to leave a message for the family there's two different avenues on our website you can leave a private video for them or you can do a, a, a type note for them and we'll make sure the family does receive it at this time, I would like to have everyone please rise as the rabbi and the family are escorted from the chapel. Thank you, Paul Bears. You can kind of step back and go by the chairs if you wish. Let me know, Bruce. Bruce? Man. You can just go over there. Let's step right there. Okay, all the way down. That's the board.
So we have just a few things left to do together. We have some words we'll say. We'll say Kaddish. And then we'll take um, a moment to place some earth on the casket. There are a few rituals, um, symbolic steps, intentions that we set in that moment. The first is that there's a custom to place three measures of earth on the casket. Three to show our intention. That we do this um, full-hearted. And um, there's also a custom for some that for the first measure, they'll use the back of the shovel. It's the wrong way. It's inefficient. But it shows that even though our hearts are full, our hearts are heavy. That we use the wrong side of the shovel to show that this is hard. But our tradition teaches that this gift this gift of accompanying our loved ones to burial is the greatest gift that we can give because it's a gift that is given that can never be returned. One last measure of kindness, of love for someone who gave so much. Also in my hand here, I have earth from the land of Israel, something that Lily cared very deeply for, a lifetime member of Hadassah, I've traveled to Israel many times. Um, and though I know some of you wished you'd had the chance to travel there with her, we'll place um, some of Israel with her, for her, as we um, send her to her final rest. But before that, we'll say Kaddish together. Ancient words of life and memory. Words that we aren't allowed to say alone, that require a quorum, require that we're surrounded by family and friends, even in this strangest Zoom reality, to know that there are, are people across the country, across the world, who are joining you in memory. And when we say the words slowly and with intention, you, you feel them kind of roll and rock. It's as if the words are, the words themselves are there to embrace us, to soothe us during a difficult moment. So if you have your... Um, your pamphlet from earlier. We'll join together. Do you have? From my book? You are the book. Yit Gadal Vit Kadash Shemei Rabba Bealma di Vra Hirute Viamlich Malchute. Bechaye chon, uv yome chon, uv chaye de chol bait Israel, Baagala uvizman kariv vimru amen. Yehe shme raba mavarach, alam ul alme almaya. Eat barach, vish tabach, vit paar, vit romam, vit nase. Vit hadar, vit ale, vit halal, shme de kudsha brichu. Laela min ko birchata vishirata, Tushbechata vinechemata, Ta amiran be alma vimru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, Vechaim alenu be al kol Yisrael vimru, amen. O se shalom vimro mav, Hu ya se shalom, Alenu be al kol Yisrael vimru, amen. May the one who makes peace on high. 
bring peace to all of us, to all who mourn, to all the world. And together we'll say, Amen. So with that, I'll invite you all to come up. Oh, oh, they're going to put the cover on first? Okay, great.
for some, the sound of it is like a little too visceral, and I'd rather just to go. If you want to stay, we can stay until we cover. Yeah. Yeah. But I was going to be like, yes, you can stay. I'll stay in front and we'll just back back up again. I think that's the best if that's okay. okay. We'll try it. <laughs> This does conclude the service of the gravesite.